Hello, I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. And in this video, we're going to show the replacement of the uh, ball joints, tie rod ends, and steering stabilizer on this 1974 VW Karma Ghia. We're going to do this in a slightly non traditional way. We're going to replace not just the ball joints, and we're not going to press them out the way that you normally would do, press them out of the arms. We're actually going to replace the whole arm. So like I said, instead of just replacing the ball joint, we're going to replace the entire arm. We bought this kit from Wolfgang International in Redding, California. And so I was telling them that I was needing to do that, needing to replace the ball joints, and I just didn't look forward to doing that. I've done it uh, quite a few times in the past on VWs. And it's a pain in the butt to do those on the car. So he told me about this setup that they offer that just allows you to remove the pole arm and stick it in. And they actually, you know, replace these on, on an Arbor press. And, it was easier to do. So anyway, um, and then you return your arms for a core. So we're going to give that a try. We're also replacing all of the tie rod ends. One we replaced here a while back, so you only see three here. And uh, new seals. Going to replace the uh, steering coupler as well as the uh, steering stabilizer. So stay with us as we uh, attempt this. This will be the first time that I've done it this way. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the parking brake. And we're going to remove the hubcap. Try not to scratch it. And then, we're going to loosen the lug nuts. Once we've done that, we're going to jack up the front end of the car and support it on uh, jack stands. The VWs are really kind of a pleasure to work on. I mean, you can jack up the whole front end so easily. <laughs> Let's catch that lower torsion bar too. Put a couple jack stands underneath it. So I let the weight down on the uh, jack stands and then I just put the jack in there snug also, just as a backup. So now we can remove the wheels. And then once we remove the wheels, we're going to remove the front anti-sway bar. Now this one doesn't have a stock one, this is a heavy duty anti-spray bar, but it's removed just the same as a stock one would be. And we'll show you a close up of that in a moment. The torsion bar is removed by first removing these clips. And so to remove that, there's a little tang right there. We're going to bend that tang out and then drive this little sleeve off right here. And that will allow this to separate and we'll remove it. Both sides are the same. There's two of these. We'll take this one off first and then the next. Okay, so what I did was I put the screwdriver between the tang and the uh, torsion bar, and I sway bar there, and, uh, and just pried that out a bit, okay? So once it's out, I can get a pair of pliers on it or something 
and bend it the rest of the way. And so I just need to bend it down straight, get it out of the way, and then I'm gonna put the screwdriver right on the edge here. You can see with the little piece it slides on, and then we'll hit it with a hammer and just drive this off. So you can see we're just sliding it off here. So next we're going to do the next one to it here. And you have to do this on both sides of course. And that's uh, how you remove the uh, anti-sway anti bar. And so that you know where they go back, you'll see that there are different lengths. So the shorter one goes to the outside, and the longer one is the first one. Just Once matches the torsion the bar is removed, now we're going to remove the shock absorber. Okay, we want that out of the way and disconnected from our lower arm. So to maybe save you a little bit of time, at least on this car, the upper shock nut is a 14 millimeter and the lower one is a 17. So after we've removed the shock absorbers then we're going to remove the brake caliper and it's held on with two 17 millimeter bolts and there's this little piece that goes between them with a little tang that keeps them from loosening up. So you have to bend down the tang first and then loosen the bolts. Then we're going to remove the caliper out of the way. In this case we're just going to let it hang back out of our way. Okay? And so we're going to go do the other side. So once the brake caliper is out of the way, we're going to remove the tie rod now from the steering knuckle. Now if you have drum brakes on the front, of course it's going to be a different scenario. What they uh, tell you to do in the books is to remove the, uh, the hub. So you would normally remove the, the, uh, the drum and the backing plate uh, on the drum brakes and you'd remove the hub and disc on the disc brakes. But that's a little more work and I'm going to try to avoid that. So I'm going to remove the uh, tie rod ends and then I'm going to remove the spindle and hub all together as one unit if possible. Now to remove this there's a a carter key right here, carter pin. So that would have to be removed. Then remove the nut. And then you need a spreader or uh, remover or whatever you want to call it. But it's a tool specifically for removing tie rod. All right, it looks something like this. This is actually a ball joint one. I got to get the tie rod one, but it slips in like this. Get my hand out of the way. So, slips in between the joint and whatever it's mounted to, and uh, give it a couple of whacks with a hammer, and that should separate this joint. Again, to save you some time. The nut on the tie rod end is a 19 millimeter. Okay, so to remove the uh, the spindle, there's two nuts that have to be removed. There's a, the lower one here, and it's just a nut and a washer. And then there's the upper one, and it's a nut with a larger washer. 
And then there's this piece right here. And that's what sets the caster and camber right here. And there's a notch on it. And I've rotated this so it would show up on the camera. Let me zoom in on it just a little bit here. You'll need to mark where that notch is. And so make a mark where that notch goes before you loosen it up so that you put the new one back in the same place. Now, if you screw up and you don't do that, a good default setting is to have this straight ahead. So once we do this, you loosen these up, you kind of move the spindle around a little bit, it'll, it'll start to come loose or separate from the uh, arms. Now on the driver's side, we're going to have to remove <clears throat> this, this speedometer cable. And it goes through the desk cover here. This is a little clip, holds it. Remove the clip. You need to pull the cable out. You can see the cable up here. We need to pull the cable out prior to removing the spindle. Be sure to wear eye protection when you're pounding on things with a hammer. I just wanted to show you, here's the, the upper one that, uh, like I said, doesn't look too old. No slop. That feels good. Slower one. I mean, you can see the movement, you can hear it, but you could hear it going in a driveway or something. You hear the same clunk. You can also, when you have the car jacked up, on the front end, just take the, the hold of the wheel, top and bottom, and, and shake it back and forth, and these things will usually reveal themselves. Okay, once the spindle's removed, we can uh, remove the torsion arm. Now, I didn't mention, but the nut that holds the uh, spindle on, those two nuts, those are both 19 millimeter, as is this. So we're going to loosen this lock nut. Once I loosen that, then we can remove the uh, pin here, and this is a, uh, or the bolt, this is an 8 millimeter Allen. And we're going to save these because this is going to go back in to our, uh, our new ones. And at this point, it just slides right off. See that? I'm going to leave this in place right now, but you can see it just slides right off. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the, the lower one. That was the upper one. That's the lower one. And on one side, these are... On, on one side, this will be facing up. On the other side of the car, it'll be on the on the bottom side. So again, that was a uh, 19 millimeter nut, eight millimeter Allen. So once it's just, you know, that um, bolt is removed, it just slides right out. And you can see all that grease. And it's just a greasy, greasy mess. And there's your uh, torsion little slats pack. And so I'm just going to take this and just wrap it with the uh, shop rag here towel. These disposable towels are great for this. You can see where the set screw sits in there. And that's very important to torque that back down correctly. That's part of what holds the front <laughs> suspension in. So as far as the tie rod ends go, you can see that one right there. This is the one we replaced previously. And so we're going to replace the other three ends 
that are just shot. I mean, um, once the uh, once your seal cracks open, uh, they're gone. They need to be replaced at that point because once that seal is breached, then uh, it allows you know contaminants in there, and it wears quickly from there. So you can see that's a nice new one. We just put that on this last year. You have to be very careful when cleaning this and everything. We don't want to get any contaminants in there because just inside this tube is the bearing. And they're covered in grease. You can't see them. But And reassembly is basically just the reverse of taking it apart. Okay, so we've got the torsion arms on, the spindle and hub on, brake caliper on, the uh, shock absorbers on, and so what we have left to do is the tie rod ends and the um, steering stabilizer and the steering coupler. Now to get to those, there in the hole back in there and it's dark and kind of hard to get to so let me show what we're gonna let me show you what we're gonna do how we're gonna handle this okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in from the top instead of trying to reach everything through the little hole there it's real easy for us to go in through the top here this is our electric Carmen Ghia, battery powered Carmen Ghia. And this is the charger right here. We just have it in the center there for display purposes. Um, if this were, you know, your personal vehicle, that'd be located somewhere out of the way. But because it's here, we're going to have to disconnect it. And that's very simple. There's just three connections that we need to disconnect. We're going to disconnect the connection right here. that out of the way. Anderson connector right here. Get that out of the way. And then the power cord, which plugs in down here. Get that out of the way. So now, all we have to do are these four 13 millimeter bolts and that whole cover will come off. I'll let you see what the view looks like then. All right, I've removed the four bolts, the little hold downs, and now we'll lift this out. There it goes. Well, does that look a little more accessible? because it is. <laughs> Let me show you a couple of different angles here because this is going to make the job a lot easier. So there's the uh, steering coupler. There's our other tie rod ends. The two outers have already been um, you know, removed. They're just sitting in place right now. Um, and then, of course, the steering stabilizer. And that's all right here. Not that you can't get it through the hole right there. It's just such a pain. This was a lot quicker and easier. Now, if you had a, a fuel tank in here, you would have uh, had to disconnect the fuel line and the uh, filler neck and the um, sending unit, uh, fuel level sending unit. We didn't have to do any of that. Much easier. So anyway, let's, uh, let's pull those loose. First, I'm gonna remove the steering stabilizer. So the uh, steering stabilizer 
Both of these are 17 millimeter also. So it just comes right on out. And we'll replace that with a new one. Well, I can't believe it, but this one came out real easy. So, very good. Well, pardon the noise in the background. It's raining and we have a metal roof, so it gets quite noisy in here. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're going to change the steering uh, coupler. And you can see it right here. There's four bolts. Two go through uh, the side on the steering gearbox go through the coupler and then there's two from the steering shaft go through. Those are a 15 millimeter uh, wrench for, for both of those, for all of those. And uh, so we're gonna do that next. Don't forget to reattach your ground wire. I'm sorry, I misspoke a moment ago. Those are 14 millimeter, not 15. So here's a shot with the new steering coupler in place and let me show you the old one so here's the old one you can see it has some fractures and when it was in the car these weren't easy to see but out of the vehicle they're a little more noticeable So these are, you know, this is a 43-year-old car, and uh, who knows when the last time these things were replaced, or if ever, kind of thing. So you need to inspect parts on occasion, and, uh, and uh, on occasion you need to replace them. Move over to the workbench here. Now we're going to start replacing the tie rod ends. So I'm going to do this one first. This is the one that the steering stabilizer mounts to. What we're doing is we're going from the end of this shaft here, just the edge of this nut, to the center and taking a measurement. So I measured that from here to there and it's uh, four and three eighths. So I wrote that down so as to not forget it and we're going to remove this one which Looks like it's going to be rather easy to remove. Turns this way. So we're going to pull this out, thread the new one in, and we're going to thread it to where it's the exact same distance. So after removing the original part and removing the nut from it, I'm putting the nut back, or not back, but putting it on the new tie rod in and then what we'll do is we'll thread this in and measure it and we're going to thread it in until we get that exact same dimension. So now I'm walking this in, measuring it, turn in another turn or two and get it to the uh, reading that I want. Boy, about an eighth of an inch off there. I think one more revolution. There it is. So now, I'll lock this down. And so I'll get a wrench and some vice grips, hold this and fork that down so it doesn't come loose. So anyway, the others will be similar. Simply going to take a reference point and then go to the center of my uh, tie rod in. And we're going to match that every time. I put it in the vise with it going down so I know when I finish that it's facing down. Makes it easier to measure, 
gives everything that common reference point. So we're going to do that on the other three tie rod ends. Well, here we are with the new parts installed, new tie rod ends, new steering stabilizer, new uh, steering coupler, and of course, our new ball joints. So now, what's well, left, what's to, left do? to do is we'll put our cover back on under the bonnet here, and then we're going to uh, put our anti-sway bar back on, gonna put the wheels back on. But before I do any of that, I recommend that you move the wheel from lock to lock a couple times, make sure there's no binding, make sure everything's okay in the wheel and all the geometry turns freely. Then you can put all that back together. And then once you've got everything back together, I recommend that you go directly to an alignment shop and get the thing aligned. That's your next step. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, you can email us at info at ev4unow.com. See you next time.